Good afternoon and welcome to a very special edition of Bill. This is a Stand Up to Cancer special, special this afternoon and we are joined by one of the campaign's most prolific ambassadors. Put your hands together, whoop, holler, make some noise. It's Kirsty Olsop. <laughs> Now, as you will know only too well, Kirsty, amazing progress has been made in the last few decades in the mm -hmm. fight against cancer. Yes. But there's some really shocking facts that I want us to all bear in mind uh, before, we, we, before we begin to, to, to talk about your experiences. Um, every two minutes in the UK, someone will be diagnosed with cancer. That means that during the time that we're on air, 20 people will be walking home with their loved ones going, right, the fight starts here. That's, yeah. that's a lot to take in. And one in two of us will be diagnosed with cancer yep. at some Absolutely. point in our lifetimes. And, and funny enough, Kate, walking home is quite important because it's a very shocking thing when people hear it. And all sorts of things happen to people if they drive home. That's one of the, the strange things is that if you, if you receive a diagnosis of cancer, you should really genuinely phone a friend. And I don't mean that frivolously. It's quite important to sort of not be alone. You know, if you go for an appointment by yourself, don't, don't then... Yeah, and that, well, that makes yeah. complete sense because how do you get your head around, around a it. diagnosis like that? Well, I think, I mean, the first thing is I think you need to think it is far, far more positive than it ever was before. You know, the fight is up and running, you know, and there is so much amazing research. And what Stand Up To Cancer is doing is funding that research. Mm. So, so that's the, the thing I think that is, there is a lot to celebrate. A cancer diagnosis is not what it was. No, and you, well, we're about to discover, you know that, unfortunately, better than most. Um, if you have any questions for Kirsty today, we're live on Facebook, as you know, so you can pop your comments and your questions in the comments section. Or if you're on Twitter, we're at Build Series LDN. Get your questions in. I will get to as many of them as I can. So you're talking with um, some real knowledge around this illness and uh, how people can put their paws up to it because you have a really long standing and a very convoluted relationship with cancer. Um, probably best that you lay down your story rather well, than I. Um, my mother was first diagnosed with cancer when I was 17 and she lived uh, with it on and off for uh, another 25 years and uh, she died age 66 in early 2014. Um, so my, my personal experience of it is both hugely positive in terms of the changes that I saw in cancer treatment over that time with mum. Must have been incredible, Kirsty, because we know what's been achieved in the last two decades in terms of stats, but to see it, to live it, for it to be a tangible experience. I mean, it's extraordinary. And the first time mum did chemotherapy, it was absolutely horrible. And then, uh, it, then you know, there was no pill form in those days. Uh, they knew much less about hair loss than they know now. All sorts of things. And a lot of those things around what happens when you have a cancer diagnosis and, and the treatment are why people can be so worried by it and frightened by it. And one of the most troubling things about cancer is that so many people are diagnosed in an A&E department. So they- Why is that? Because they know that there's something wrong and they're afraid. Quite understandably. But the thing is, the sooner you can get it diagnosed, the sooner the doctors can get on with doing something about it, the more likely you are to up your chances of continuing, you know, forever, as long as you and I. So. That is one of the, the things that I always think is that when, when I'm doing work for Stand Up to Cancer, I'm, I'm a bit torn because you want to talk about raising the money and the funding and how cancer can be really crippling for a family. But at the same time, you want to be positive about it because you know that if people are too frightened and concerned by cancer, they are not going to seek treatment as early as they should. And that and is... The an sooner you yeah. are diagnosed, the better your yeah. chances. And yeah. that's with any form of cancer. Yes, absolutely. And that's another thing, Kate. Cancer is such a difficult word because, you know, the C word and it's frightening. But actually, it applies to so many different things and so many different conditions. And, you know, it's basically cancer is sort of something going a bit wrong 
with a bit of your body. But to varying degrees. Yeah, You're right, exactly. it's entirely complex. Yeah. There are so many different threads to one word. One word cannot fit all. Yeah. That's, that's certainly the case. And, and, and you really do know that better than most because not only did your mother um, have a 25-year experience with cancer, but her, her mother before her, so your grandmother. Her, my grandmother, um, her sister, her daughter, her daughter... And, um, and then my sister decided that she wanted to have a preventative mastectomy. Because you, your sister, you have two sisters, I've Natasha got two and sisters. Sophie. Yes. And you were told um, that because of the female relatives in your family, and this is, your, this is Sophie was, on the end. This is Sophie. This is uh, your mum. And this is my mum and my dad and me. This is, I love this picture. It's fantastically old. Although I was looking at it and thinking, am I wearing that same dress? But no. <laughs> <laughs> But um, because you, you, you ultimately carry um, a genetic risk of developing think, a one in three chance, you're we, told. We think, and this is, this is the extraordinary thing, because there was such a strong family history of breast cancer, um, they have said there is a 50% chance that we have an 80% chance of getting breast cancer, which translates into one in three. Now, that's, there is also... That's, that in itself is very complicated it's, to it's get your head around, isn't it? Because the thing about breast cancer is, like many other cancers, sometimes it's hereditary, sometimes it's not. Now, because of the family history in my family, they think it is a hereditary breast cancer, but it's not one of the ones that's been uh, recognised. So they don't know what the flag is. They don't know what it looks like. So they think that there's a strong likelihood that we might have it, but you get your genes from both your mother and your father. So you could not have it at all, but if you did have it, there would then be an 80% chance of you developing it. So, so, so your sister decided... She had that operation, um, and uh, she was nine years younger than me when... She, oh, well, she is nine years younger than me. And she and always will be. And always will be. <laughs> and always will be. And she hadn't had children at that stage, whereas I had had two children and, you know, breastfeeding can help. Although, you know, there are loads of different things that can help and things that can contribute to the, making it more likely that it might happen. So um, for me, I, it wasn't the right time for me to have that surgery. And now I am quite a lot older than my mother was when she first got it. So as you get older, your chances of developing it are less likely and it might be less serious if you did. It's so complicated. There it is so really many complicated, yeah. Mitigating factors that, yeah. that map out your yeah. particular uh, chances of it developing yeah. and everybody has their own path that they take. When when were you told this? As three sisters, when did you all sit down and and receive that that piece of information? Um, I d I don't remember it being a specific thing, because my grandmother had had breast cancer, uh, as had her sister and then her daughter. My mother was on the lookout for it, and so she. I mean, that's why she spotted the lump that she had as early as she did. And um, so I think, but in those days, preventive mastectomies didn't exist. You know, the, the research into breast cancer genes and stuff was only in its infancy. So it Which shows you how far we've come, right? Yeah, the fact I mean, that that yeah. research is there now has yeah. given you and your sisters a chance to make an informed decision. Decision. And different decisions, but informed. But yes, and, and that's the thing. And that's, that's why what Stand Up to Cancer do is so remarkable, because they are out there battling, you know, to, to battling for the funding for this research. For, for answers, for, for choices yeah, for people to make. For, exactly. So that... Because so that, the research is into so many different things, different treatments, different therapies. You know, is it immunotherapy? Is it surgery? It, you know, new forms of treatment. You know, we've had chemotherapy for a long, long, long time. And although it has developed um, and is, is less harsh than it used to be, it, it still does knock out the rest of your immune system. And, you know, oh, it's brutal. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty... It has to be. Yeah. It has yeah. to do its job, yes. fiercely. yeah. And, and it's it's not much fun. No. So, you know, obviously we'd like to see the back of that if possible. Um, but it's fascinating. I want I, I, I went on the tour of one of the labs, the cancer research labs, and the people who were working there are so remarkable and the things they're doing are so extraordinary and it's absolutely fascinating. I mean, I could have stayed 
all day and come back the next day. Because there is so much of you that must be invested in this because of the people that you've loved and lost. And also the fact that you may have to accept at one point that, that you are going to get that well, diagnosis. And that, that's not easy to live with. But the thing is, Kate, I could get another form of cancer as well. We all could. I mean, uh, you know, I know about breast cancer because I have a family history of it, but I could get something else completely unrelated, a different form of cancer. Of course. But your, your mum was very knowledgeable and always informed during her 26 yes. years of, of fighting this illness. Yes. When she realised that you three girls, her girls, her precious daughters... Yes. Um, ...were at risk of carrying this gene... It was her request to you, actually, wasn't it, that you she, have she, a, a double mastectomy? She, she would have liked all of her daughters to have this operation. There's no doubt about that. That's um, a hard conversation for you to have as a family, I'm, I'm sure. That is. I don't think... She certainly didn't have it with all of us at the same time. Um, but we all knew that's what she, what she felt, that that's what she would have liked. Um, I think... <sighs> I don't know. I think, obviously, as parents, we all want our children to do things and not do things. You know, none of us want our children to smoke. Um, uh, and, you know, we our parents do sit us down at different times and say, please, will you not do this and you not do this? And um, But this is this is something else. This, 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 is, this, this, this is something else. And I think it... Uh, I don't know how much... She certainly never put any pressure on us um uh but she did make it clear that that is what she would like i think that's hard for you to come back and it, say do you it, know yeah, what mum i hear I, you I'm but not, i'm not going to do that i think for me i had been there when my mum had recovered from many different surgeries and procedures and i just couldn't face the idea of that particular procedure myself now i have seen inside quite a few hospitals and um you know i've seen uh you know what it, it's it's not it's not um particularly easy but again it's the same thing it's so much better than it was you know I'm, I, it's always that thing of do you do you talk about how unhappy it made everybody how afraid everybody was you know uh, you know, spending the time in the hospitals and... Or do you say, look, actually, it was all worth it. Uh, my mum was diagnosed when she was 42. She lived till she was 66. Um, she had, um, you know, she had a remarkable life with my father and her, her watched her children grow up. It certainly was not by any stretch of the ima imagination all bad. And And imagine if she had, when she first found that lump been afraid and not sought treatment yeah and you know you're, you're very you're, that's that's your big push on this isn't it is face the fear yeah go in there deal with it yeah. because it might not be as bad as no. you think it, especially it, because of the advances it, that the advances made. the amazing advances that these extraordinary scientists are doing and you know somewhere okay we don't know somewhere right, right now, now it, Somebody is doing something amazing. Somebody is putting two and two together and realising that something they were working on six months ago correlates with something they're working on today. It's mm. just extraordinary. And in many ways, your mum is evidence of that because yes. she lived with cancer oh, yeah. for a long, long time. Long, long time. I mean, at one point, she sort of... Uh, we were trying to get her, encourage her to to engage with social media, which she was <laughs> very reluctant to do. Um, uh, and we we said, oh, I bet there's a Facebook group for people like you, mum, who've had cancer for this long and had it this many times. Because she, the extraordinary thing about my mum is that she had, in the end, sort of multiple types of cancer. So, so she she got breast cancer. And then she uh, had all the surgery and the chemotherapy and everything to get rid of that. Seven years later, she got another cancer, which she thought, oh, oh this is going to be a secondary cancer related to the first cancer. But no, it was a second primary cancer. Sort of lucky, but, unlucky. And the difference between those is, is, is it's significant. significant. Yeah. It's significant. Just to explain. Can yes. Can all you hear is cancer and everybody goes, Ugh. Yeah, but primary cancer and secondary cancer. So cancer, secondary cancer is the bad news. Yeah. Secondary cancer is not good. But then, you know, my mum had nine years of uh, mastercization. That's what they call it when, when the cancer sort of 
moves around. So you can get, you know, you can get a melanoma, you can get a skin cancer, which then goes into your liver, or you can get a throat cancer, which goes into, you know, it, it goes around your body via your lymph nodes, you know, how the system where everything travels around the body. So mum had a second primary breast cancer, which was a sort of weird miracle. And then a few years later, that did metastasize into her spine. But that was nine years from, so, so I don't know if I've spoken about this before, um, uh, but I think, because when my mum was alive, I really, I didn't speak about her cancer. And uh, I was approached by Cancer Research UK to do some work with them. And I went to mum and I said, you know, I've been asked to talk about this. And she said, listen, you know, we know I'm going to be going in the mid, you know, she she knew at that stage she wasn't going to live until the 90s. But she said, would you mind just waiting? Because at the moment, it's my cancer and I need to deal with it in the way that I deal with it. Once I'm gone, you know, do whatever it takes, you know, spread the word. Um, and uh, so I didn't talk about it that much when mum was alive. Publicly, not really at all. And, um, but... When mum got the, the cancer metastasized into her spine, a doctor did say to my dad that she had about six months to live. And my dad stood up and says, no one tells my wife how long she's got to live, and walked out. And she had another nine years, as it nine turned years. out. Nine years. So, so you... Well, your dad was right. Yes, he was right. <laughs> and, and, and that's, a, I mean, that's, you know, there are so many issues around this, Kate, because that's another thing. A lot of people involved in cancer want to be very, want us to be very careful how we talk about it because... Misinformation it, it, is it, a terrible yeah, thing. Yes, and it can be luck of the draw. Yeah. And if you get a di diagnosis and you ha do have less time than you might have wanted. It doesn't mean you haven't fought hard enough or done the right thing. It, 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 you know, there are so many different elements. And, and my mum was lucky. She was lucky. I mean, if she was here today, she'd probably say, oh, I, and I did this, and I did this, and I, and I took a lot of notes every time I went to see the doctor. But, you know, part of it is luck. Um, so no one who, if there was anyone watching this who is having cancer and thinking, oh, you know, is there anything I'm not doing? You know, you shouldn't... Worrying is probably one of the most damaging things. You yeah. think so? Yeah. yeah. Worry is worry is, is full stop a bad thing in, in this scenario. Very hard not to, though. Really hard, really hard not, not to. Really hard not to pass that fear through the family line. I mean, yes. Your children have, have, have had cancer around them all oh, their lives. Yes. No, well, we had... And here they are. So that is my stepson, Hal, in the green T-shirt, my yeah. son, Bay, my son, Oscar, and JM, who's their best friend... Um, and uh, they, so around that time, actually, not, I think, I, I can't remember how long ago that was. It was a while ago. And um, probably around the time that mum was very sick. And uh, our dog got breast cancer. Oh, I mean... <laughs> What's the chances? I know. I mean, I went to the, the, the dog had this lump and I went to the vet and the vet said... I'm really sorry, the dog's got breast cancer. And I, I, I can't repeat what I said. I mean, I was just, I was, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> seriously. Seriously, yeah, seriously. The children have felt this so, on so many yeah. levels. So, so, so when, and, and then our dog died. And, um, and she was 16, um, but she did die, you know, it, 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 she did die of the breast cancer. And, um, and then my father-in-law died of cancer. But he was, he was, uh, he was 80, he was in his early 80s when he died. And he was incredibly active until six weeks before he died. And he was a remarkable man. And if he was here today, he'd say that something has to take you. And he had a fantastic life. So he shouldn't be sort of seen as a cancer victim, victim exactly. Or someone that was taken by cancer. Um, but then within a month, my mum died. So my father-in-law died in December and my mum died in the January. And, I, and about three weeks later, one of the children did get in a terrible state and say, you know, who's going to catch cancer next? And I did have to explain that you don't catch it like a cold and that it was an unlucky trio in a short period of time. But, you know, it, it wasn't something to worry about. And I, they don't talk about it now. And, and I, they don't know about your own... 
situation with the, the prognosis of no, you made? No, they, they don't. I haven't really talked to them about that because I haven't, until they find the gene that mum had, which they're looking for, obviously not specifically for her, but for lots of other people, um, there's no point. If they came back and said, you have a 50% chance, uh, you have an 80% chance, you have the gene, we've discovered the gene, we know what it looks like, and you do have it, then I, w I would definitely have that surgery immediately. You would have a double yeah, mastectomy? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, and then I would explain to the boys um, what was going on. But for the time being, they're, you know, they're young. And that must no have been such an awful time in your, your family life. So much loss all well, at the door of one illness. I think, I think that's why I, um, I really like to point out that this, this, that this word is so widespread and applies to loads of different parts of the body sort of going wrong in a way that it, it, it's, it's difficult. Because, I, I mean, I don't want to talk about specifics because there might be somebody, you know, watching and thinking, oh, have I got that or have I got that, you know. But there are certain types of cancer that are not good. Yeah. really are not good. If someone says, I have X or Y cancer, you know that that is... But a lot of people don't know the difference between those. And that, no. that's the important work yes. that a, a campaign like Stand Up To Cancer does. It arms you with information, yes. but it can only do that if we keep those funds coming yeah. in. And yeah. that's it's very important. The stand and I feel no shame in asking people for their money oh, around no. this, do you? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no. no, no, I mean... Um, I mean, you've, you've done lots for them over the years. You've, you've dressed up like the Queen. You've yes, done yeah, that was a privilege. I, I've dressed <laughs> up for the Queen. I've done, yeah, I've done all sorts of things with Stand Up Cancer. That um, uh, We were laughing, weren't we, before we came on? There you are, look yeah. at oh, that. There, there we are. That Even was, Claire Foy yes, run for her yes, money, don't yeah. you think? <laughs> that was dressing up as the Queen, um, very which regal. was fantastic. They said... Um, they said the the whole campaign was dressing up as someone who you felt was a a, a rebel, um, and uh, I said the queen, and everyone went really. Um, but I think for any Crown fans out there, I think we are really realizing how much the queen did stand up to members of her family, courtiers. And you she know. started to carve her own path, yeah. right? Yeah, she really did, and she really did. And the other thing I love about doing that photo and was that the Queen is 93. You know, she has managed to um, dodge cancer the whole way along. So she's a, she's a real kind of example to us of someone who who I think I think cancer takes one look at the Queen and thinks no. <laughs> <laughs> if only it were. No. If only it, it, it were it, as <laughs> simple as that. Um, but this year, what can people do? Because the the the, the message of this year's campaign is is payback. It's payback. We're sick of it. Yeah. We're, we want payback for all the loved ones that you've taken, for the people that are living with cancer every day and, and fighting I for think, the next day. I think the important thing is the energy of this campaign. It is that thing, that, that, that punching thing that you just think, right, I'm going to find it in me to do this thing, which is a challenge for me, you know, running, climbing, depriving yourself of something, you know, doing something which you is a challenge for you, but which you'd battle with. Um, and, and, you know, th there is no idea too extreme that you cannot use it to raise funds for Stand Up To Cancer. I mean, people do all sorts of fantastic things. And yeah, don't think that, oh, that sounds a bit nuts. The more nuts, the better, Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yes. If you say, right, I'm going to... I mean, run naked down my high street. Yeah, we'll yes, support that. Yes, that's fine. You've got my donation not. already. Yes, Anyone yeah. here brave? I mean, <laughs> literally Oxford Street is just a moment away. <laughs> I, I, yeah, really anything. Anything that is fun and full of fighting spirit. That's what we that's want. That's what we want. That is really what we want. And just because it's energy, it, 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 that's what the, is at the heart of the campaign is we want everyone to find the fight, find the energy and go for it and, and, and find fun ways of, of getting together, spreading that message that research is everything and research needs money and we need to raise that money. But also fighting fear, fighting lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. fighting all the bad stuff that's And you are the cancer. master of that because you could have enveloped yourself in fear yeah. and your family and your stance on, ta on cancer is very, very fierce. You are standing up to it and I applaud you for that. Well, that's you're very fun. kind. It's, it's a... It's a 
there's a lot of other people doing it. Well, your glass is either half full or half empty, exactly. right? It's yeah. how you frame that. Yeah. yeah. And, and well, I, I, I do think that is to be applauded. Here's a little look at what is really going on at the heart of this year's campaign and how you guys um, can take away from it what you will to help us put our paws up to cancer. Well, that's Kirsty blowing the roof off. <laughs> But I, it was remarkably hard to film that because you, you've got the cartoons, which obviously you don't see. <laughs> and so you have to go down together on the plunger thing. But actually, of course, because it's not a, a real plunger, yeah. you, it's, it's quite light. So we bossed it. Yeah, we did. One of us had to hold it up, basically, and the other uh, had to push it down. And we had to both look as if we were pushing it down. <laughs> but you did a great job. But that's Phil doing a, a very good job. Thank you for sharing your story not at and all. your experiences Thank today. you for asking and, me to come. And please... Do let us know how your family fare. I know that you get checked every single year. Every year. That's incredibly important. I have a yeah, mammogram. I don't want anyone to think that Kirsty is just living in hope with a no, fingers no, no. crossed. She's no, not. I have a mammogram and an ultrasound. And I'm, you know, very careful with what I eat and drink and, and my exercise and everything like that. Because, you, you, you know, we do have to take responsibility. You know, one of the things we know now, and there was some amazing research from Cancer Research UK recently on lifestyle cancers, and it is something we need to, to understand is what we can do to help ourselves. Because while these amazing scientists and doctors are out there researching and treating, they don't want us to overtake their work with the bad things that we do. Yeah. So it's about managing yeah. your lifestyle, yeah. making really good, healthy choices. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that... If that day comes, you're in, We're in fighting the form. Best position to fight it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. We will be back with another a special edition of Stand Up to Cancer for Build, uh, sharing more stories and more uh, innovative ways in which you can help us support the fight against cancer. Um, thank you very much. Let's thank hear it for Kirsty Olsop. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. <laughs>